We're going to kick it. Thanks, Christina. Thanks, Jeremy. Great to see you guys. Congratulations on the summit. You guys are doing a great job. Yeah. Uh, I'm Joel Calm, and somewhere lurking here in the wings, I bet, is Mr. Travis Wright. Travis, are you with us yet? Nope. He's still uh, working on getting here. So uh, as soon as he gets here, we'll, uh, we'll officially kick things off. But this is going to be a panel called Tokenization of Assets blocking value and we're going to have some really compelling conversation about the future of tokenizing assets because this is game-changing stuff from what i could tell so on our illustrious panel we have mr stephen mckeon he is the ceo of macgyver media and also on the board of diversity and blockchain welcome stephen well, thanks a lot for having me. It's a pleasure. We to be have here. Uh, Adam Bloomberg, who is the co-founder at Interaxis. Adam, how you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? Fantastic. Glad that you're here for this discussion. And uh, we have Tobin Lent, who is the general manager of digital at Tops. You know all the playing cards that we collected over, you know, our childhood and teenage and probably adult years as well. This guy's in charge of uh, of digital. So welcome, uh, Tobin. Hi, Joe. Great to be here. Excellent. Good to have you. Mr. Travis Wright, are you with us? Hi, I'm with us. I've been promoted to uh, be part of the panel. It's good. Oh, welcome. Good, sir. Well, I just uh, introduced um, the, the three panelists, and I thought, why don't we take 30 seconds here for uh, each one to give a, a brief you know, bio of themselves. So, Stephen, why don't you go first? Sure. Hi, everybody. My name is Stephen McKeon, also known as Mac from MacGyver Media. I've been in the IT software world for at least 20 years. Most of my career has been in R&D, reverse engineering, that kind of stuff. I also consider myself an ethical hacker, and I love taking things apart to see how they work. Um, I've also been involved in the crypto and blockchain space for at least four years now, mostly in the mining and now getting the smart contracts and NFTs, uh, really exciting times. Uh, I really like this stuff. It's uh, some cool new stuff we'll chat about. So. Um, other than that, you know, uh, we, we do software uh, that builds uh, anything from uh, like CRM to ERP systems to like for alcohol companies and stuff like that. Large, a lot of data. We do uh, dashboards and KPIs. So we, we like data. I love blockchain and what it represents. And there's a lot of cool stuff uh, we're getting into as well. Excellent. Uh, Adam, tell us about you. Okay. So I am actually a financial advisor. Uh, have an RIA, a registered investment advisor here in Texas, been in this business, been in that business for over 11 years, but got interested in crypto, in digital assets, in blockchain, went down that rabbit hole, decentralized finance. Uh, last year started a YouTube channel to educate people about decentralized finance and about cryptocurrency as investments, not as trading, not as moon, anything like that. It's how, I look, how we look at it as financial advisors and how the, the technology pertains to them and why it's important. I use this uh, whiteboard back here to just record myself trying to explain things in a way that I would explain to my clients. Fantastic. Well, we hope that you'll be doing some whiteboarding to explain some stuff tomorrow, to us today. Tomorrow I will. In my, uh, my talk tomorrow, I'll be getting on the whiteboard. Excellent. Uh, and finally, Tobin Lentz, go ahead and tell us about you. Hey everybody, uh, great to be here. Uh, so I'm the, the VP and a, a Global General Manager of Digital at Tops. So basically I'm managing our digital business globally. And um, uh, one of the things that entails is managing our portfolio of digital collectible mobile apps. Uh, we have properties like uh, Marvel, Star Wars, Disney, WWE on the entertainment side. On the sports side, we have MLB baseball, NHL hockey, uh, soccer titles. Um, so big responsibility there. I joined about a year and a half ago uh, with a real focus on growing the business, uh, but also uh, innovating the products and kind of reimagining what digital collectibles can be. And so one of those things is obviously looking at blockchain. We've been looking at it, you know, since I got to Tops a year and a half ago, uh, we made our first move, as uh, many of you saw, with uh, Garbage Pill Kids on the Wax uh, uh, platform. And that did pretty well. Uh, we're excited about the space and looking to do more. That's beautiful. So I guess, you know, this is uh, a, a lot of people who are tuning into this maybe have never heard of non-fungible tokens or NFTs. They're going, what, what is this? What, what does this mean? So maybe, you know, each one of you give your, how would you explain an NFT? And why do you think they're an important aspect moving forward in this whole digital world? Hmm. 
Uh, anybody jump in? I, I'll, I'll start. So I'll admit that, you know, I'm probably the most inexperienced here. So my answer will be the most basic. We can go from there. Um, but, you know, the way we think about it, it is really, you know, a, a digital object uh, of which you have ownership that might have utility or some meaning beyond just being um, kind of a currency. So it's something that you can enjoy, you can trade, you can use uh, on, on a blockchain platform. I mean, that's, that's the way I kind of think. What's your definition, Stephen? Well, I mean, it, a little more technical. I mean, I believe it represents a, a better way. It's using basically the same blockchain te te technologies that we're currently using to send value. But now you're basically having an entity that could be one or as, you know, as many as you would like for that issue. And that's it. And they can be transferred around and the you know, ownership is transferred. Uh, it's basically a way of transferring that item around. Um, there's everything from digital parcels and properties to collectibles. Uh, like, you know, you know, baseball cards and stuff, everything's really going that way. And it's a one way of kind of like adding real absolute value to it, knowing that you actually own that without somebody just making a copy of it as you can do right now with some other things. So does that make any sense? That's perfect. Sure. Yeah, well, uh, in my world, the way I look at, at NFTs and, and kind of real world assets, tokenized assets, of course, coming from a financial services world is I look at real assets like real estate, uh, private equity, hedge funds, private companies, um, other things like that that can be denoted using some sort of security token in a way that uh, I can hold it digitally and, and more importantly, I can transfer it digitally. It has more transparency. It has the immutability of, of blockchain um, and it's just a much more efficient, effective way to, to denote some sort of ownership of, of something. You all talked about collectibles. We've talked about um, electronic real estate, digital real estate. But the way I look at it is, is real assets. Those things, the, the, the bond funds, the bonds, the, the real estate, again, the things that, um, that we would love to be able to trade either, either peer to peer or have more access to um, is now becoming more and more a reality. So when I think about NFTs, I don't know as much about collectibles and I don't know as much about digital land. I know a lot about real world assets and helping people invest in them. And so when I see that added to blockchain and the ability to uh, create liquidity, create more transparency, create uh, other services on top of just owning that asset, that is where NFTs really get me excited. Well, why don't we do this? Let's start with a broad use case that I think everybody will understand. And then I wanna narrow into uh, what you're talking about uh, right there. Um, Adam, because I think that, you know, those of us that are, uh, we, we like the bright, shiny objects, but, you know, the collectibles are a lot of fun. We get to the real big practical applications. I think that's going to be interesting. So I'm just going to share my screen really quickly and address this to, uh, to Tobin and then the rest of the panel. This is um, actually a catalog of cards in the Garbage Pail sets, uh, Garbage Pail Kids set that was released last month on the Wax blockchain. Um, you guys made 110,000 of these cards in different uh, variations available for um, you'd buy packs of them and, and maybe you get lucky and get, you know, one of the really rare ones and you sold out in 28 hours. Now there's only 110,000 of these cards and, and offline before um, I asked you, Tobin, if you had information on how many physical cards were created for Garbage Pail Kids back in 1985. And you've done some research and I think you have some data to share for the first time. I sure do, Joel. So these are kind of rough numbers, obviously that goes back uh, quite, a, quite a few years, but you know, all in all, across all of series, there were probably well over a hundred million cards sold. Uh, for, uh, one, uh, it was anywhere between five to 10 million. So if you even pick the, the low end of five million, that's how many, that's how many cars were sold. Wow. That's my, that's mind blowing. Cause at 5 million, you figure there's 82 different base cards. You know, you've got 60,000 or so per, per card, but there's only in the digital set, there's only maybe 1500 of them per card. Yeah. That's about right. Less than a thousand. So what was, what was the, 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 uh, the idea to keep this first version so so low, the amount so low, and our future series that you might release going to be this low a number as well? Are you thinking of, as, as it becomes more successful to increase those 
those numbers? Yeah, so our, our approach in, in blockchain has really been, you know, it's kind of the wild west and we're exploring and, you know, we're, we're making small bets and trying then to learn from that and then take another step. So we really didn't know, you know, uh, where would be the best place to start. We know we didn't want to go too big and, and just have the, uh, the, the uh, asset sitting out there for a long period of time. We wanted to, to make it rare and make sure that the, the community at WAX would really pick this up. And so that's why, you know, we limited it uh, to, to the number that we did. And we were very happy with the results. You know, we didn't know exactly what was going to happen. Uh, some people internally thought, you know, it was going to take a while to sell out. I personally felt it would sell out pretty fast. Um, I gave it, gave it an 80% chance it would sell out in a day. And I felt that way just because I thought a lot of the, the folks on WAX and other crypto uh, currency enthusiasts would come in and, and snap up these, these assets first time that tops came to the blockchain and, and Garbage Pail Kids is, is a very beloved uh, pop culture brand. Uh, so we, we were happy with that first release. Could we have gone bigger? Maybe. Um, you know, it definitely will influence our strategy going forward, but, but still, you know, what we're thinking about is offering rarity and value to the people that do go in and buy these assets. And, you know, they'll be on the WAX blockchain. We're not gonna release another series one. So those people that own those series one uh, digital op uh, collectibles, you know, there won't be any more. They'll have them. There's rarity there. Yeah, it's so it's such a an interesting interesting thing, and we've had a lot of fun in this. Like the community around it sort of has developed on its own, and there's so many rabid fans around this wax and and tops partnership, which I think is brilliant because whenever you would buy a pack originally, they were called wax packs. And then you partner with Tops, and they're they're wax packs again. So that's that's freaking genius, and uh, it's it, it's been very fun to sort of watch this grow. And you guys did this with basically zero marketing. You sent out a couple of tweets, and that was it. Yeah, basically, and it really really came down to the community. They were they were uh, watching what was happening, and you know we we leaked this out to some of the GPK fan sites, and it really just it took off. Great. Well, I'm curious, some of, you know, did, did uh, Stephen, Adam, did you see this take place uh, in the, the, uh, the shockwaves that this has created in the blockchain community? Well, I missed the tops thing. That's amazing. That's awesome to see that kind of adoption. I've gotten involved in it from a couple of different things from, uh, I, I like VR games and kind of 3D reality stuff. So I kind of went in a little different direction. I got into a game called Crypto Voxels. And uh, there's actually a pretty cool game that you can actually buy and sell um, parcels and all the properties are blockchain entities. And, and so are the wearables and things that come along with it. It's a, a pretty cool thing. It's like, I'm wondering um, if we can get some of those tops things to be uh, bought right into the video game. Um, yeah, no, it's pretty cool. It has a lot of amazing stuff. Um, every single property has been sold out already and they're creating a couple new ones as they go, but they sell out very quickly. Um, and they're not cheap. I uh, wound up getting a few of the cheapest properties in the game, and I spent about $2,000. Um, you know, it was fairly uh, significant. And uh, there's a lot of people that are in here, and everybody can build it as they please. Uh, if you have an idea how to do 3D bottling or something like that, you can fairly pick it up. What's cool about this site is you can actually go through and um, send a link to anybody, and they can get right into your world, and they can see and go through and give them a tour. Um, there's all kinds of cool stuff. Um, it's a really, a, a, it's kind of a groundbreaking thing. And also know that all the parcels sold out in this and they keep selling out anytime they create a new one is pretty, uh, it's kind of telling as well. I think people want this kind of stuff. And uh, what's really interesting, if you go to any of the parcels, if you may me, uh, make me the presenter, um, they like to, um, they have the ability to show the history of all the parcels. And I think this is a great model for moving forward for like how the real world can run and how parcels and deeds could be you know, handled in the, in, the, in the blockchain in real life. So I think it's a, you know, it's a great model. It's still kind of a coming up and there's a, there's a couple competitors, but it's kind of unique. And I don't know, I, I've kind of taken a liking to it. Um, would you mind if I show in a little bit here? No, Maybe it's fine. It's fine with me if you want to okay. pull that up. Um, awesome. So give me one second here. Uh, I'll share this. I was just showing off a little bit and I, I encountered yeah, was a parcel. I mean, a, a Bitcoin and an Ethereum were racing around a track. <laughs> Yeah, I saw that too. I thought that was pretty neat. Uh, so I'll go over here and just pull up uh, one of these here. So I think I have a couple properties. So I'll start with this one here. Um, 
As you're showing these, I'd like to hear uh, Adam's thoughts on what he's seeing because, again, he doesn't really, he's not in the, the collectible space necessarily. So, this might be a whole new world. So, I can put his collectibles in here. So, this is one of the parcels I built. And I built this, and this took about seven hours, and I, but I had an idea how to do 3D modeling. Hmm. Um, I More like Minecraft, textures. right? It's kind of like Minecraft, yeah. It's, a, it's like, kind of like the blockchain version of Minecraft. Uh, these are called, it's called Voxel World. Um, so I was able to kind of take some stuff, build this property, put, you know, links I can, you know, link to any of my social media stuff, some, you know, speaking engagements I had here. Um, you know, I also created warps to my other properties. I have two other parcels. This is a small property, but it's very popular. Um, this property already, this parcel has changed hands probably about 30 times already. And I was lucky enough to get it. I'm going to hold on to it for a while. But, you know, I was able to kind of build these up. It's kind of neat. Um, so I'll show upstairs. It can take anybody in here. They can, can see this. And I can see them at the same time when they join here, too. So it's kind of neat. It's a kind of community thing. It's not just a, a solo thing. There's probably people in here wandering around. So this is where I wanted to show you guys is this is, um, this is an NFT as well. And I might be, you know, might be able to show some of the other things you were talking about, those mm -hmm. digital cards, it, much pretty easily as well. So this is a digital asset that, you know, this artist, only sold so many of them. It gives you all the things, how rare it is. This is the only one of so many. It gives you the history, the buying, you know, similar kind of thing. So it's kind of neat. It shows all the ethnicity of any of the items. Um, you can go in and see further if you'd like to do it. So I bought a few this of those. Is, so this neat. is only on the, the Ethereum blockchain though, right? Correct, right now, yeah. We don't have the ability to do you know, cross blockchain. Like I want to put, you know, our, our, garbage pail kids in here i can't do that i could take a picture of it no. put it on blockchain but um adam i know you you've got some thoughts on this i want to hear what you uh think of what you're seeing here yeah well the the first thing is i had i had never seen the garbage pail thing before <laughs> that that particular one of course i've heard of garbage pail kids and and had them at some point i was a more of a baseball card guy but um I, you know and i know of what mlb try has has tried to do and, and the digital uh aspects they've uh taken on and, you know, on one hand, my thought is I, I kind of put on that, that old man hat and like, this is ridiculous. Who's going to connect? Uh, who's going to collect digital trading cards? And then I remember that at some point my dad said, that's ridiculous that you collect real trading cards and they have that much value. It's a, it's a piece of paper with some dude's picture on it. Um, and, and it was you know, a monster industry for so long. And, and I realized that things have value because people give them value. Like it, it, it has, it's worth whatever someone else will pay for it, right? right. Um, the other part is, this is so amazing because you see that once you kind of dip your foot in, the, the unbelievable value that people create and the creativity that they'll come up with. And right. you, you just know that crypto, crypt, whether it's crypto voxels or Decentraland or, or what have you, is going to have a tremendous amount of value. People are going to figure out how to build huge businesses around it. Uh, I already know a guy who uh, created a, a DAP to lend based on your uh, crypto voxel and Decentraland uh, properties. So you can mm -hmm. already get loan using loans using those as collateral. Collateral. You can oh, that's, that's pretty cool. I didn't know that. I, I yeah. thought that kind of like somebody told me I was talking to another guy who has a crypto voxel property and he says he's already leasing it out for $150 a day. And that's just for the lease of the land. And then he charges about $150 an hour to build. And then you, that, that's actually more than some real property. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, but you know, look, pe people are going to figure out how to use it and therefore it's going to have value. And once it has right. value, then I, then, then people are going to figure out how to invest in it. And again, once it, right. once I can use it as collateral and of course, because it's an NFT, because it's on blockchain, because, because if I don't pay my rent or I don't pay for my loan, they can just take it because uh, you, you know, there's, it's not like there's a deed right? It doesn't have to go through some transfer agent or the state or anything. Um, it's great to be used as collateral. Someone's going to figure out a, a reason why it's so valuable, why your piece of land is valuable. They're going to open up some sort of store. I can't even fathom it at the time right now, but it's going to happen the same way when, when TikTok came out and you're like, this is ridiculous. People are making these <laughs> stupid 15 second videos and now it's multi-billion dollars and they're starting an education platform and, and, mm -hmm. You know, it's, I will never, ever, ever stop being amazed at people's creativity once they just start playing around with something like this. Yeah. Like, it's just not great. going to end. And so, again, on one hand, I think 
some of this is ridiculous. You're creating this whole digital land. What, what's wrong with you? Why can't you just go outside and smell the, the fresh air? And then I remember that if you go outside and smell the fresh air, you're probably going to get sick. So <laughs> this is, this is right This is much safer. Uh, and then, I hear you. I mean, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, 4.1 Ethereum. That's how much this parcel That's costs. what I'm telling you. That's a, this is the cheap, one of the cheapest properties. I'm telling one you, of the cheap the, ones. You can see that how this appreciates over time. It's built in. So this is open seas, the marketplace, which is honestly becoming like the eBay of digital assets. Hmm. And it trades for multiple platforms, not just crypto voxels, Decentraland and even crypto kitties, you can buy and sell one. It's actually got a very sophisticated API, and I thought it's really great. Um, mm. It's a first of its kind, um, and it's really well done. I mean, you can see uh, the asset. Look at the asset. You can see appreciate over time how much it's going. You can actually see the history, almost like the whole D transfer of I bought it at 4.1, but look at all the people. It was, I mean, look how much this property was moved around already. This is a yeah, fairly new that, game. That, that's fascinating. And it brings me to my next question. Joel, if you want to take over and share the GPK market. Yeah, go right ahead. Because I want to ask Tobin about this because this is some – so say, for example, I have a 1952 Mickey Mantle rookie card. I, I need you to stop sharing your screen. Oh, I'm there, sorry. So. Yes, go right ahead. There you go. Right. So say I have a 1952 Topps Mickey Mantle card, and I sell that thing on eBay. Topps doesn't make any money from that, mm. right? That thing could sell for thirty to $50,000. And, and Tops is making nothing. Now, what's been really interesting about this is that a secondary market had popped up around these, these, these GPK cards, these uh, garbage pail kids. And what happens is every time one of these sales happen on the secondary market, Tops gets 8% of that sale right off the top. And then 2% or whatever goes to the marketplace. Meaning that whenever these things are resold over and over and over again, Tops will get a little kickback on that. And so I wanted you to talk about that, Tobin, is how valuable of, a, of, a, of an ongoing revenue source this kind of thing can be for you guys. Thanks. I mean, this, this was one of the things that was probably the most promising to, to me and to us about blockchain is the, the downstream opportunity, right? So we have a primary sale when we sold these GPK cards uh, into WAX. And, and uh, you know, it's pretty well known. We did it for, um, you know, 100K. And, you know, then we turn around and see this ecosystem just explode around it. Uh, there was first one marketplace, Simple Market. Then within a day, another marketplace uh, popped up to trade these, these uh, collectibles, um, GPK Market. And it was amazing to us how much volume was trading, especially in those first few days. And in fact, what was interesting is uh, on the, after the initial sale, 50% of the packs went unopened because a lot of these people went in to, to buy those packs to turn right around and, and flip it. But uh, there was a ton of activity in the first few days and even in the first week. Uh, but that amount of money that was traded was about six times the original primary sale. Uh, it, was, it was amazing and, and it still is happening. And so for us, we think, you know, we've never been able to participate in that revenue stream before. And, and, you know, sales and transactions going on uh, at eBay, uh, places like that. So this is an opportunity for us to build a new business model uh, and participate in that downstream uh, opportunity. So we're, we're, here's there's uh, something, by the way, can I, can I jump in for a second yeah, there? With the, on, on something he said that was so interesting. And if I don't jump in, I'll forget. Um, early, we, we talked a little bit about how uh, like Sam's and Walmart at one point kind of destroyed baseball cards, right? Because so many people wanted the baseball cards that Tops and all the producers had to produce so many to, to meet the, to, to, to grow their revenue. But now what they can do is they can actually capitalize on the scarcity that they create because they're going to, they're going to be able to participate in the actual trading of those. So the scarcer they are and the more they're actually traded, now they can participate and they don't have to throw out 20 million of them they can go, we're only releasing 100,000 of them, and they get to continue to, to uh, participate in the, the scarcity and not the mass production, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a really good point, Adam. Really you know, one of the things that's kind of fun for us is that, you know, knowing that we design our products, uh, uh, collectibles accordingly, right? And there's, there's so many things, it's not just the trading of the NFT, of the uh, collectibles, but there are other opportunities. This is an open ecosystem, right? And so uh, developers can come in and do a variety of things, create games, um, create contests, whatever that these digital collectibles can be used in. And, and I think that's pretty, pretty much the uh, uh, 
biggest opportunity we've seen downstream uh, when you can create these collectibles and they can continue to drive value both for collectors and for us um, in this ecosystem. Let, let's broaden or let's uh, let's hone in a little bit more now. You know, we've talked about owning virtual real estate. We've talked about owning collectibles. And in the collectible arena, there's card games. There's, uh, you know, there's little gold coins that are, are actually backed by real gold. But Adam, you're talking about bigger assets being tokenized, real world assets. Uh, share a little bit of, you know, some use case in that respect. Sure. Well, we, we've already seen um, the, the easiest and earliest use case, I guess, ha has been real estate, right? Real estate is kind of the easiest thing. If we're talking about tokenizing real world assets, real estate's the easiest because you can see it, you can touch it, it has value, it has an appraisal, um, all those things. So if you're going to get investors to invest in real estate uh, and you just issue a security token to kind of denote it, uh, it, it actually makes things a little bit more efficient. It makes things a little easier. And the only thing you kind of have to explain to those investors potentially is we're tokenizing your, you know, we're creating this digital token. It's not cryptocurrency. Don't worry. It's not Bitcoin. It's not going to go to zero. We're not going to use it to, to buy guns or drugs or anything. Um, that, that's kind of what you have to explain. Uh, we, we've also seen a few like private equity funds, a few hedge funds go that direction where they're actually creating a, a token uh, partially because it's more efficient to uh, provide the distributions to their token holders to track who owns it, right? And eventually, hopefully, to provide a market. So just like the, the garbage pail kids were released and almost immediately there was a secondary market, well, you would love to have a secondary market for your private real estate holdings. Be because one of the big problems with investing in something like real estate is it's highly illiquid. If I invest in a certain building with a group of investors, I can't usually go sell my, my part of the investment. I have to wait for them to sell the whole building. But in this case, now we can potentially have a liquid market. We potentially have a second market for that. And the transparency of the blockchain gives us the, the ability to look at the current value, the current appraisal, all the income that's come in, all the renters, what the, the property value is. Um, all those things so that it has a value. So if one of you wants to buy my, part of my investment, some of my tokens, you should be able to know exactly what it's worth to you. And we should be able to make that exchange. And the issuer doesn't care who owns it. They're paying income to the token, wherever, whatever wallet that token's in, that's where they're paying income. And they don't care who owns it. it, it you know, assuming that person has been KYC'd and is a credit investor and everything, they don't care. So that's what's really exciting because now you have trillions and trillions of dollars where the real world assets that you can eventually get on chain and you can put together the people who need the money to invest it and the people who have the money and want to grow it. I love you that. could maybe I almost, almost get to the point where you could, you know, like we're able to do with crypto now, like for with crypto.com, you can put some crypto yeah, and then top up your card and use that as a debit card. So maybe someday you could use your real estate assets that are tokenized and sell a couple of shares of those and convert those into cash that you can use on a debit card or something. Wow. But you can't well, do course, today, like with stocks, you, like you can't do that. Well, well, just like, and just like we were talking about the, the crypto voxels parcels and the Decentraland parcels, right? I can now use my potentially my security token based real estate as collateral now because, and I can use it as collateral on a loan that doesn't have to be to a bank. It could be to one of you guys, right? Because now if I don't pay my interest, if I don't make my payment, you can now take my token, right? We lock it up in a smart contract mm -hmm. and you can just take my token and the ownership, the provenance of that particular asset has now been changed. So now you open up the ability to, of lending to so many different parties that are not banks because we have the ability now to, to take ownership, to enforce the actual contract now that says I can now offer this as collateral because you guys can actually take that collateral from me if I don't pay, right? We can have that smart contract, mm -hmm. which, which just blows up this ability to, to invest in all these assets. So when I look at clients and go, how are we gonna invest? And I say, now you can invest in more private companies because we have more transparency, there's a liquid market, you can get loans against it. It, it just incredibly uh, increases the size of, of the market now. And now you can have a portfolio that has security tokens with real estate and cryptocurrency and everything else. And you can, as you said, you can use that money now. I can use the income I'm getting on my security tokens and go straight through, through to a debit card. 
Uh, this is interesting as, as you were uh, sharing that uh, since OpenSea was brought up, I just uh, I went on there and I just did a search for our podcast because we've dropped um, NFTs to our listeners is a proof of listening. You listen to the oh. show, we give you a URL, you've got 72 hours to go claim this NFT. And there's some that people are attempting to resell these That's free great. NFTs <laughs> that, we, uh, that we gave them um, here on, on OpenSea. So, awesome. you know, that's I don't know great. if anybody's bought one, but um, it's interesting to see somebody listing. Well, you find something. out it has a history. You can go right to the listing history and see if anybody actually sold it or bought it or purchased it. Um, no, no, I just trying to sell it. It was birthed and it was sold. Well, I mean, it was a, a freebie we we gave away to people, but mm -hmm. yeah, on one of our first tests, a little foray into this. Now, I have another question for Tobin around. So, with baseball cards and collectibles that are physical. Now, this is actually one from, from Michael when we were in the pre-call. He wanted me to ask you this around, and I think I already know the answer, but other people might not. So with regular baseball cards, if I take it and I accidentally hit the corner, well, I've just damaged the value on that. Or Lord forbid, I put it as my, on my baseball card and my spokes on my bike, and now I made a motorcycle out of my bicycle. Now I've destroyed that card, and it's worth less now. Now, whenever we're talking about digital assets, they're all pretty much the same. They're, they're in mint condition. And maybe talk about the, the rarities and how the mint numbers and stuff are, are going to determine that, that value of those cards, whereas not necessarily the quality of the, of the mint condition of the card as it is today. Right. So you're absolutely right. I mean, you know, physical car world, uh, you'd go and get those cards uh, 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 valued. And if they're in really good condition, they, they would sell for a lot more. And there are a lot of specifications around that. But in digital... What was interesting, and we didn't really uh, think about this with this first launch, is you know each time uh, one of these packs is opened, a new collectible is created. It's minted on the blockchain, and um, you know we didn't think a whole lot about the sequence of that. But you know the first time somebody opens up, for example, a pack with a uh, nasty Nick card, there's a number one on that, right? Somebody opens up another pack that's number two. That's a second um, nasty Nick card. And what was, what's interesting is the collectors that are getting these are placing a lot of value on, you know, those, those early minted cards. There isn't an, an LG2. That's great. Okay, so and, look at this. Physical cards. <laughs> there is the, so wow. the, you can actually sort the, by mint. So the, the um, users, this was never intended but this is what ended up happening. The community started looking at minting. And so the marketplace now shows this is the first nasty Nick prism card minted out of 223. And somebody's trying to sell it for almost $40,000. But why do that when you can get the number two mint for, you know, $2,400. <laughs> right. But I do believe that that number one nasty Nick sold for a couple grand. I mean, it, it's astonishing to me how much money these, these collectibles are selling for. I mean, it's, it's in, you know, just a normal base card will sell for, you know, five bucks potentially. Uh, and these packs initially cost, you know, $5 for five cards, $24.99 for 30 cards. And you have an individual card selling for $5 pretty ru routinely. Yeah. The higher value cards are selling for, you know, up to a hundred and in some case, you know, a thousand bucks or so. Well, let me bounce this question back to you, Tobin, then. And I want to hear from Adam and Steve and what, you know, go back to their nerdy childhood or their nerdy adulthood. And what would they like to, what would they buy if they saw it tokenized? Tops has a lot of properties, right? You've got Major League Baseball, you've got Star Wars, you've got the Marvel Universe, you've got wacky packages. Um, I'm assuming that you're looking at all of this and going, how do we bring this audience to digital and blockchain? Well, for sure. I mean, we, we, we have really good properties and we are having conversations with our partners about this. And this is why we're trying to get into it now and learn as much as we can understand uh, the collectors in blockchain value, all of those things, the downstream opportunity. But we are talking to those folks and we think that there's a huge opportunity there. So, Adam, what would you uh, nerd out on and want what to nerd have? Out? Well, I would nerd out on one. You, you know, I, I'm, again, more of a, a sports guy. So, nerd out on something, uh, especially if some of those come with some other, something else attached to it. So, it's like the opportunity to have a, a FaceTime call with the, the athlete. You know, if, if I have number one and I, and I buy it, 
um, I have the opportunity to have a, you know, a 10 minute call with whoever that athlete is. That would be cool. Now, it, as we're, as we're talking about NFTs and other things, I don't know who's followed it, but basketball player Spencer Dinwiddie, um, you know, has, has tokenized his income for the next few years. Right. Mm -hmm. So he's created a bond and is selling security tokens um, where the, the purchasers of that will actually get a piece of his income. And if he signs another big contract, they'll actually get a piece of that. Um, it, it's, it's brilliant and genius, and, and it's going to be the next generation of what entertainers and athletes do. So something like that, coupled with some collectibles that Topps has or, or someone else, would be awesome because Spencer has said, I want to have other, other opportunities for the people that invest so my first few investors can get tickets to the All-Star game or tickets to a game or dinner with me or we're going to play one-on-one -on -one or something. So if you couple not only the collectible with some, something else cool that goes along with it, um, I think that adds to it even more. And then, you know, what of that is tradable? Um, I, I'm not quite sure, but to me that you, you can add even more value to it that way. That's great. Yeah, we recently did a set with uh, Derek Jeter where we actually did a um, activation with him, got him on video and asked him about his, his uh, career and found out, you know, who his biggest rival was, his famous teammates. And we actually captured all that video and audio into collectibles and made a set out of it. And it's been really popular in our mobile app, uh, Bunt. And so, you know, something like that on the blockchain would be incredible because of the longevity of it. Yeah, this is great stuff. I mean, honestly, Adam, excellent points. I wasn't even thinking about some of those other things of tying in, you know, actually direct dialogue with the athletes and stuff. That's excellent points. I mean, honestly, I, I was a big baseball card uh, uh, fan as a kid, and I'd like to see any of those as a kid. I mean, I couldn't even fathom as a kid like <laughs> what we're talking about now. This is amazing. Honestly, it really creates the um, um, genuine uniqueness of them by using them as a blockchain thing where, you know, I was always so excited to get so much of a, a rookie card back when I was younger, but, you know, like, wow, I got one of these and I thought it was so unique and stuff like that. But now that I know a little bit better, um, now there's such a better way of handling that. And I think this is a long-term thing, not just a, a short-term fad. You know what the best thing is? is? Your mom can't throw them out. Oh, man. That's, oh, man. My mom threw a lot of mine. I lost a lot of heartbreak. You know what, mate? Your mom can't throw them out, but I bet my kid can figure out a way to delete them from my phone. <laughs> that's, that's probably true. I was thinking how great, like a, a, a baseball, all the like maybe 80 of the top baseball card rookies of all time oh. and have it be the rookies set. Legends. Then, yeah, oh, yeah. Legend, oh, yeah. Legends, oh, yeah. but the rookie cards. And then said, so the, but I want to, I want to actually give this information to the audience here. So Tobin said that that one nasty Nick sold for two grand. Well, since Tops gets an 8% of anything that's on that secondary market, they made an extra 160 bucks out of nowhere because that thing sold on the secondary market. That right there, folks, is why digital collectibles and being a creator of digital collectibles is, is so huge if you have the IP because that ongoing revenue stream. So we want to throw one final, one, final, one final comment out here and one final question to the audience because this was just announced, I believe, yesterday or the day before. So William Shatner is getting into wax and blockchain, <laughs> doing blockchain-y things with his memorabilia. How cool is this? <laughs> that is excellent. He's, he's tokenizing his stuff. <laughs> and you guys can go and, you know, duck, duck, go and search for this. But he, he's launching NFT trading cards based on his life. And some of them are actually tied to his actual uh, items. He's got memorabilia. He says, uh, I have dental records. He says, I, I, it's an x-ray of a tooth but he can get it. He's got an image of himself hugging Leonard Neboy on a card. Like all of these, these things on these cards are uh, either photos from his life or photos of things he owns. Awesome. And he's almost 90 now. So, I mean, this is some, this is like some, some cool memorabilia from himself from his whole life. It's just phenomenal. Like, See, like mass adoption's getting here. Tops is involved. William Shatner's jumping in. There's all kinds of other things happening in this space. And so it's so fun to see, to be right here at the beginning of these non-fungible tokens as they're set to explode amongst the world. Yeah. I, I think the secret's not out yet. Um, you know, it will be very soon. 
Well, what, maybe that's the last question as we wrap up here. Just got a few minutes. Let's go through each one. What do you think is the tipping point to bring that mass adoption? Stephen, let's just start with you. I think we need a good use case. I, and I honestly agree with Adam in some senses. I've had a lot of experience doing, uh, you know, software for uh, municipalities, you know, and stuff like that and how parcels and properties and deeds are handled. And that's a mess. And something like blockchain can clean that up and really clean, you know, make it much better. And looking how it was done in that crypto voxel game was a really good model, I think, as a good starting point to see how that could work. So I'm pretty excited to see how this will be applied to real life. Tobin? Um, I think, I mean, you know, I started out early in the mobile game space, and usually what happens is there's some really big success, right? And that shows everybody what the potential is. And then based on that, you get developers coming in, consumers coming in. And the second part of that is uh, we've really got to make this easy to use um, and not difficult uh, for, for consumers. Uh, those are the two things that need to happen, I think. That's great. Adam? Yeah, I, uh, I'm a big pro proponent of education, right? Mm -hmm. it's educating people to understand how, how this works, why it's different, why it's better. And then I'm also a proponent of, of kind of easing, easing into the water, dipping your toe in, whatever analogy you want to use. And then the really smart people are going to figure out how to really swim. And um, when, from the perspective of things like real estate, like Steve was talking about, uh, title, uh, deeds. It's going to start in probably smaller municipalities where, where they kind of have to do this. Um, but when everyone else, when some big state does it, like if Texas were to do it or California were to say we're, re we're overhauling this whole thing or an industry like oil and gas, mm -hmm. then, then you're going to see it blow up. That's right. great. Hey, hey thanks, guys. guys. Yeah, Jeremy. I was going to say, sorry to have to uh, interrupt. Let's go ahead and wrap this. Thank you so much. This was uh, one of the more entertaining panels today. Thank you, Joel and Travis, for hosting. And Tobin, thank you so much. Looking forward to having you back. Adam, um, yeah, and Steve, this was just incredible. Thank so you thank you guys. Pleasure. Uh, we'll see Thanks all you guys. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great night.